Hello, race fans. This is Jeff. This is Racers Reunion TV, and we're in Randleman, North Carolina, in the Richard Petty Museum. I'm here with Tim Leeming, and we're waiting for the arrival of the king. How are you doing today, Tim? I'm doing fine. Of course, I'm excited, as always, when Richard Petty's involved. Hey, man, you are, you're a Richard Petty kind of guy, aren't you? I am a Richard Petty kind of guy. I don't have quite as big a smile, but I work on it a lot. Tell us about your background with Richard and, and how you became such a Richard Petty fan. And when did it start? Well, it actually started with my uncle taking me to a race in 1952 because he pulled for Lee Petty. So in 1958, there was a race at Columbia Speedway, which is my hometown and in which there's big events coming up. The Love Chevrolet Columbia Speedway Spring Festival and Racers Reunion on the 25th of April. But he decided to go to the race that night, and I, I wondered why, because we knew Lee Petty was not going to be there. He was racing somewhere else that night. But there had been no advanced publicity, to my knowledge, that Richard Petty would be, make his first race. So we went out that night, and when we pulled in the infield and got out of the car, there was a 57 Oldsmobile convertible with a 43 and a little bit of Petty Blue on the back of it. So right away, I figured since Richard was closer to my age, I was going to start pulling for Richard Petty. And little did I know that starting that night in July of 1958, that all of what surrounds us here today would ever happen. July 12th? July 12th, 1958. That was his first race in a convertible at a Columbia convertible. Speedway. Right. Now, and you... Good to your word. You became a Richard Petty fan. You stuck with him, and, uh, and, and give us some more of your background there. Well, I stuck with him all the way through his career, and in 1959, I think it was July 17th of 1959, Richard came back to Columbia Speedway, and he was in a 59 Plymouth convertible. I think his dad had given that to him as a birthday present down at Daytona just a couple of weeks before. And he came down, and, and I believe he qualified seventh for the race, and he actually won it. And... Of course, that was my total elation because the guy that I had chosen to pull for, the guy whose fan I was going to become, had won his first race. And again, little did we know what that was going to progress into later. Yeah, how about that? So Columbia Speedway was a dirt track then, and uh, as we know, a lot of the stars, the guys that went on to become stars in NASCAR racing raced at Columbia Speedway and speak well of that Speedway. And then it was paved... Uh, in 1971? 1971, I think, when R.J. Reynolds came in to support NASCAR and all the, the tracks were trying to get asphalt tracks so they could hopefully keep the dates that they have for Grand National events, and, and they did pave it. And it is still in pretty good condition today, even paved, but it was a beautiful paved track, but I think it took away the magic of Columbia Speedway and, right. and all the races that we had there on dirt because it was a beautiful dirt track. When you get 20 or 30 laps into a race, you could actually hear the tire squeal like they were on asphalt. Mm -hmm. When I raced there, I actually got the tires on my race car from James Hilton, tires that he had run at Talladega. I'd go up to Inman and buy them. He'd sell them to me $10 a tire, and I'd run them five or six or seven races. So, you know, it, it was a wonderful dirt track, but when they paved it in 1971, came down to run the two grand national races. I think one was in April and one was in August. In the, in the first race in April, they had a big ribbon cutting ceremony. And my mother, who became quite a Richard Petty fan, had taken a piece of that ribbon and gave it to Richard to tie around his steering column for good luck. So Richard won that race. And at the end, in the last several laps of the race, he was being banged on and beaten from behind by David Pearson and a couple of other guys. They were getting ready to pass him, but Richard did prevail and won the race. So, of course, my mother goes up to him afterwards and says, well, Richard, didn't that ribbon work just fine for you? And Richard, as he always has a good comment back to everything, said, well, you almost cut it too short. But, <laughs> but he did win that race. So he came back in August. Again, he was in the 70 Plymouth when he came back in August. And he went out and won the race. But my claim to fame for that particular night, and even bigger than what I was racing myself there, I guess, was Richard stopped on the start-finish line at Speedway, and Dan Scott handed me the checkered flag, and I climbed in the passenger side of Richard's Plymouth, and we rode around the track, you know, going slow on his victory lap, and I was waving the checkered flag out. And, of course, we went past turn four, where my mother, my family, and everybody else was gathered in the infield on the back of the trucks, and my mother saw me go by, hanging out beside of Richard Petty's car, and her mouth 
you could have parked Richard Petty's car in her mouth <laughs> when she saw her son hanging out that window. But yes, I have so many wonderful memories of Columbia Speedway, and I am so happy to see what's going to happen there April 25th. But also, following Richard through his whole career, I can remember things like the Darlington wreck in 1970. It happened right in front of me, and I was standing on the back of a friend's pickup truck in turn four at Darlington. Wow. And when his car started flipping, of course, I hit the ground barefooted and started running down as the car was flipping over. And I got behind the fence where the car upside down, and of course, Richard was hanging out with his arm I've seen that out photo. the window. Yeah. Yeah. That's a scary looking photo. Oh, yes, it was very scary for me. So I was standing there on the back of a guy, jumped up on the back of a guy's pickup truck. And he punched me in the shoulder and said, would you get down look at what you're doing? And I had run across broken glass and it just sliced the bottom of a foot open. And I was bleeding all over his pickup truck. But they, they got Richard, put him in the ambulance, and as the ambulance was coming around the pits to go out, I saw Richard look out the back and put his thumb up. So I knew he was all right. I was not at Daytona when he had that horrific flip down there, but I saw that on TV and, wow. of course, helped my breath. But um, Well, that's great, and it's great to have you. You're conducting this interview with Richard, and, uh, you know, it's my pleasure to have you, and especially somebody with a background like you, you know, with, with uh, being a Richard fan and, and actually being one of the founders of the Richard Petty Fan Club. Yeah, we actually started that fan club in February of 1962 after Richard ran second to Fireball Roberts in the 500. Uh -huh. But in August, uh, August the 8th of 1963, when Richard and his father were both in Columbia, we got them to both sign a charter to the Richard Petty Fan Club of Columbia. Uh -huh. And I've still got that charter hanging on my wall at my house. And for that year in 1964, by that time we were putting out a monthly newsletter because my church had given us an old mimeograph machine. Uh -huh. So, and Mary Burnside had chipped in some money for a treasury. So we started printing a newsletter, which certain people will tell you was the most biased press <laughs> that has ever been written because I did all the writing. And <laughs> heard some rumors about that. <laughs> oh, you don't know. <laughs> I mean, anybody in politics these days would love to have me on their side doing that kind of writing. <laughs> but uh, we did the newsletters and sent them out, and we had Southern Motorsports Journal then was really big in racing, and they were kind enough on several occasions to print letters that we had sent in and information about our fan club. So we ended up having roughly 250 members in 11 states and, and one Marine in the Philippines. So we decided in Labor Day 1964, we were gonna have a meeting in the fourth turn at Darlington Raceway. So we had, and I've got pictures of this, a 1956 Dodge two to hardtop Hemi engine that we had Richard Petty Fan Club of Columbia 43 flags on the front, just like the presidential limousine. <laughs> Banner all the way down the side. We drove that car to Darlington, parked it in turn four, and set up our petty flags, Plymouth 43 flags. And we had people show up. We had 300 or more people in, in that fourth turn infield that became members of our fan club, including a Chrysler Plymouth dealer that drove all the way down from Indiana to come to that meeting. So we had just a very exciting time. Back then it was still possible that you could you could see the drivers every day and everywhere that you wanted to. We came up to Petty Enterprises more than one time and Richard and, and Morris and Dale Lemon, everybody were always so gracious to us and you know if we had had enough pickup trucks to haul it all off we would have more Petty wrecked cars in my backyard than they have in the museum here but unfortunately we took lug nuts and tires and that was about all we could carry away but it's been a wonderful life for me to be involved in stock car racing the number of years that I have and to see what it has become. But I'll tell you, Jeff, the biggest, most impressive thing that has happened in the last 15 years, I think, in my stock car racing life was when I discovered racersreunion.com because it just put me into everything that was a part of my life, the racing from the days when racing was guys that were making a living at it but guys that were doing it because they loved it yep. you know and it's like somebody said not long ago and he'll probably say it again today if i can trick him into it but nascar is in show business now and it's good i mean i love nascar and i'm watching it on sunday but you have to go back to the beginnings like like the columbia speedway yep. and the half mile dirt tracks and the half mile short tracks like bartonsville 
that they just ran on not long ago, and it makes the history of the sport so much more valuable to have racersreunion.com. It's like you ask anybody under 35 years old who Buck Baker was. Right. And very few of them know that. Yep. Or, you know, there are people that do not even know who Fireball Roberts was. And to me, that is unbelievable. But that's a part of what racersreunion.com is doing to educate people. Well, we appreciate you and we appreciate your support. And ladies and gentlemen, arguably the first ever Richard Petty fan sitting here with me, getting ready to do an interview with the King. So stay tuned. After this, the King. Thank you, Jeff, for everything. Thank you.